we're Canadians. We choose to live where we freeze our face six months out of the year. So let's embrace it. Keep in mind, you aren't in a tent anymore. You've got a furnace. We can go camping. I cannot believe that we've got all this money invested in these beautiful vehicles, these trailers, these, these motorhomes, and uh, we have to put them in storage. We want to camp in winter. Do you have a plan for us? Yeah, it's, it's sad. We look at them for six months out of the year, but really the season isn't done. Especially here in Western Canada, we get so many nice pockets of nice weather when the Chinooks come in that we can just take off. But even then, it's cold like this, why wouldn't you want to have your own limousine to go to the ski hill? You have some tips and tricks for us inside, because I don't want to be out here freezing, on how we can make this whole thing a little bit more comfortable. Oh, of course. I mean, we can make it so you can use your RV, and it really depends on how you want to use it. And we're going to go over a couple of options to make it so that you can either go dry camping or even wet camping in winter. We can make it happen. You're giving me some hope. So help me out. What do I need to do to be able to winter camp? The first thing you need to ask is, do I need my water? And I mean, lots of people say, oh, well, I want to use the washrooms because the outhouses are frozen. Well, using your washroom is fine. Using your whole hang tanks is fine. But do you want to use your running water from your tanks? And you know what? If you can get by with having a jug of water on the counter with a pump on it, life's pretty easy. There's not a lot you got to spend to do it. I mean, your toilet, in order to use your toilet, you just use antifreeze. Instead of flushing with your foot, you open the valve, use antifreeze to flush it into the tank and what's great about that is it's not going to freeze in your tank so you can actually dump your tank as well. So I mean if you're just worried about your toilet having a little bit of pumped water on there your furnace can generally keep you really comfortable down to that minus 20 range uh, but I mean if you want to go hardcore you want full systems you want to use the washer the dryer uh, the dishwasher then we need to take some steps to get you there. Everyone gets hung up on how much insulation is in the walls, uh, how many panes are in your windows. Well, that's all great, but look up. Look at your roof vent. So you might have two, three panes of glass in your window. You look up at the roof and your roof vent has that much plastic between you and the outside. So one of the very first things I do for anybody is sell them a vent pillow. A vent pillow is just a plug that we put up in that vent. We stop losing all the heat through our top roof vents. That's step number one. Heat rises. Heat and rises. guess what? It's going right up there. What's next? What next is then we need to think about where are we going to lose the heat? And what most people don't realize is the majority of our heat is lost under our floor. So it's not so much the wind hitting the window, it's the wind whipping underneath your trailer that's robbing all the heat out of that floor. So what do we got to do? We've got to stop the wind flow underneath your trailer. So if you're parked for six months at a, at a year round campground, you can skirt it in. Not a problem. But when you're mobile is when you have to really start thinking about what can I do to increase the R value on my floor. And that generally the best option is a foam. They'll spray on a liquid foam like they're doing inside residences now in between the frames. They can spray that on your undercarriage and add another R13 to your frame. And there are some things you really need to think about before you do that. Primarily, are you still in warranty? If you're still in warranty and you get a plumbing leak and one of my technicians need to go in there and chip out that foam, you've made an enemy for life. So I usually like to say don't foam in until your warranty period's done. Until you've had your shakeout period, you know everything's good underneath there. Then you can foam in and that's going to take a lot of that heat loss out of your floor. And really between covering the top vent, spray foaming the bottom, making sure you have good windows, you're sealed for heat. In your home, you're breathing dissipates that moisture throughout the whole home. But now you're in an RV that's much smaller and when you breathe out, I've seen many RVs that actually rain from the roof just from the humidity of you living inside the RV. So covering those windows does sound like a great idea, but we cannot have your RV vacuum sealed. So I actually prefer to leave those windows actually breathing a little bit so we can get that moisture out of the air. And you know what, there's, there's not a lot of great answers, but it comes down to will you be plugged into power or will you have no power? If you're plugged into power, a home grade dehumidifier, you definitely want to invest in that. That's going to keep up to you. Now, when you're going off grid a little bit off the power, there are chemical versions out there like dry Z air that'll take the moisture out of the air, but they're a slow, slow process. So if you don't have power, in all honesty, I'd rather you see you run your furnace more and crack a window. What about heating my tanks? 
heating your tanks that's that's the big question when we started off we talked about uh, doing a dry camping versus a wet camping and if we do want our tanks what we need to think about is where are our tanks located now a lot of RVs will have our fresh water our drinking water tank inside the box of the RV so you can generally crack a compartment door and allow air to get to it and you aren't gonna freeze that assuming we have heat inside the RV but for us it's the dump tanks the dump tanks are generally exposed or they're below belly before we foam in we do need to make sure we have heat to those tanks now not just the tanks we also need to heat wrap all of the lines coming to and from the tanks we use heat trace tape for that but on the tanks themselves we'll actually use a heating pad that's both 12 volt and 110 volt and we put a number of these pads on each tank and they can keep it from freezing I mean down to minus 40 without a problem for those guys with a little bit more resources than me that can play around in the big boys um, in a bay like this on a motorhome higher end motorhomes this is actually a ducted heated area so it looks like it's exposed on this girl but it's actually quite toasty warm for most of the seasons if you do not have ducted heat into that area we've got to get heat to this area the moment i switch over to a little space heater there's no more ducting going into my into my wet base so that's something to consider you betcha and that's why i really like the idea of people utilizing their heaters that are on board the good thing though is if you go to the snowbird destinations in Canada, which is the southern Okanagan, the island, uh, Sunshine Great. Coast, those are the, some of the nice places. They do get cold weather, and if you do some of the stuff that we discussed, it's possible to actually live quite comfortably. Oh, there. very comfortably. There are lots of people that do it. Um, not all Canadians can cross the border to go down into the States. So we do have a large population that are in southern Ontario, southern British Columbia, that are quite comfortable all year round. I mean, yeah, you might have a cold day or two but generally it beats the heck out of where we were two minutes ago we do run free seminars come take them in we don't charge a thing you even get free donuts and we'll talk about what you need to do and if you don't have time to take in one of the seminars we hire professionals to look after our guys come in say the question what do I need to do and I have people here that are gonna walk you through it 